Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we're going to have a discussion video about which role is perceived to be as the hardest or easiest to play in Mythic Plus environment that is going to be looking at tanking and healing and basically DPSing. And I think it's important to differentiate that the difficulty of the roles is going to vary greatly whether you're going to be doing, how do I say, a new player coming into World of Warcraft, into Dragonflight, into Mythic Plus environment versus someone who's doing high-end Mythic Plus keys. But before we're going to start the video, I do have to say that there is a big advantage to someone who likes to dabble in multiple roles. For example, if you're a DPS player who also likes to heal in the downtime, you probably have a better understanding of when to use defensives or what the healer is going through. And I think playing multiple roles can only make you a better player especially in high-end mythic plus environment and especially for this video i did try out different roles i did end up playing a bit of my guardian druid i did end up playing a bit of my devastation of ochre i played my balance druid before just to get a better understanding of what different roles have to go through but keep in mind my tanking and dps thing is very subpar because i don't really play them and my opinions are mainly coming from these lower end keys when it comes to tanking and dps thing which is probably going to be very different for someone who's doing really high-end mythic plus tanking or dpsing but we're gonna start the video and we're gonna talk about tanks or tanking in general so if you're a tank player you'll probably have a bit of a god complex because you are the group leader i think anyone who plays tanking in dragonflight or in world of warcraft generally is someone who likes to be the lead of the group and it is somewhat assumed that you have a mythic plus route ready to go and i think that is probably why i would consider tanking to be one of those roles that has the highest barrier of entry if you're a tank who has no clue about a dungeon in terms of routing and things like that, you're probably going to have a bad time. And tanking role is something that a lot of people are scared of because you have to remember, a lot of the affixes will affect tanks directly. If you end up dying as a tank, people can look at you and flame you. And a lot of the times there is a lot of, how do you say, fear of tanking. And I think Blizzard tried to help that throughout the, how do you say, Dragonflight because you have to remember, if you have a route in mind, there's a lot of videos out there, there's a lot of websites to help you with routing in Mythic Plus Dungeons, so you can check out tanking streamers and see what they're doing. But generally speaking, to remember Prideful in Shadowlands, if you have the wrong count and you activate Prideful at the wrong locations, it was really, really bad and you would get flamed, there would be a lot of angry people in the group and I think a lot of tanks were put off by that. Now in Dragonflight, you don't really have that with Thundering Affix. So it's a lot, how they say, less punishing if you don't have the right count. But I still consider tanking to be one of the most difficult roles right now because of that barrier of entry. And if you really want to take it up a notch in terms of personal responsibility, you can play a Blood DK. Blood DK is one of those tanks where, how do they say, 90% of your survivability is coming from your skill level, basically. Can you maintain, how do they say, can you maintain the self-healing? Can you do the pulls that you intend to do? Because a healer can help with your survivability but they're not going to be able to keep you alive as a blood decay because most of your survivability is coming from your self-healing so a lot of the times if someone is really fed up with doing those meticulous dungeons in terms of pogs and all that they might roll a blood decay because you're not reliant on the healer you basically do the pulse you want to do and your survivability or at least a large portion of your survivability is all up to you and you can see here the footage of my guardian druid i was basically learning the rotation of guardian druid on the go i didn't really look at how do i say the most optimal button suppress i was just mashing the keyboard so i paid most of my attention to weak auras to the buttons to again abilities that are coming off cooldown i'm assuming if you played a tank for a long time and know your class you're not going to be spending most of your time looking at the rotation rather looking at the group maybe tracking interrupts seeing what's going on how can you optimize the pulls again deciding can i chain pull the next trash pack pull because your group is good enough to deal with interrupts these kind of decisions are all up to the tank because you are the leader of the group, you set the pace of the dungeon, and majority of the time, at least in poke situations, you have the route that you like to follow. And now let's look at DPS players, and in my opinion, it's the most chill role out of the tree. I have played a bit of the DPS in terms of Devastation, in terms of Balance Druid, and honestly, I play DPS classes when I want to relax. But keep in mind, there's a lot of DPS players out there, and separating yourself from the, from the bunch can be really, really hard. So if you're someone who wants to get a quick Q, DPS might not be the way to go because believe me, when a Q is queued up or looking for group tool, there is plenty of choices out there. So if you're not playing what is perceived to be meta classes, 
there's probably five or six other guys who are playing the meta class and they're ready to roll. So separating yourself from the large bunch of DPS players can be really, really awkward. And I think generally DPS mistakes are less noticeable because, for example, if a DPS dies, you can still continue with the dungeon. You can get a battle res. It's not going to be the end of the world. If a tank dies or possibly healer dies during some really heavy healing intensive situations, there might be, how do I say, there might be a wipe. So when you're looking at lower end content and pogs and things like that, the DPS role, the responsibilities are not as big as that of something like a tank player or maybe a healer and your mistakes are less noticeable but you have to remember that a good dps player who provides insane amount of damage throughout the whole dungeon uses defenses where they have to use defensives and uses interrupts that kind of player can really really carry a group because right now especially in high-end content you can have a perfect run of a dungeon and not time the key because the DPS is not big enough. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of mistakes of happening, maybe wrong routes. But at the end of the day, the more DPS you deal, the mobs live less, you need to spend less defensives, and the life of tank and healers are a lot, a lot easier. For example, you can have a bad run of a dungeon where you wipe multiple times, but you still time the key because the DPS were kind of pumping. So there is a big difference between a DPS player who's just doing the bare minimum and someone who's a god tier player who's providing insane amount of damage, using defensives at the right time, and using interrupts which is a prime example of streamers like Smog, who's doing keys without a healer with 4 DPS. Again, he's doing keys with classes that provide off-healing, and Prod Paladin provides insane amount of off-healing, but that showcases you that a lot of the times, a good group with a lot of off-healing doesn't need the babysitting from healers. But generally, at the end of the day, I would still place DPS classes as less difficult to play than tanks, and now we're going to move on to healers. And I might be a little bit biased, but I'm going to be placing healers as the most difficult role in mythic plus dungeons when you take everything into consideration so keep in mind i didn't consider healers to be the hardest role for a long time especially in shadowlands in season three where the healing requirements were very how they say almost non-existent and a healer was a full support hybrid role you would spend most of your time dpsing and then you would help with healing on the rare occasions when you needed to meet those healer checks i didn't think healer was all that important i don't think it was all that difficult to play but now in dragonflight especially before the dungeon nerves the healing requirement has been increased significantly so at the start of dragonflight healers would have to really focus on healing and keeping the party alive and i think that aspect was really really difficult and it caused a lot of anxiety for players because a lot of the times if the group wipes people are looking at healer and on top of that most of the mythic plus affix and again there's a jokes going about this healer affix most of the affixes out there will impact tanks or healers the most. For example, explosives will be handled by the healer 90% of the time in higher end mythic plus dungeons, and certain healers just don't want to play whack-a-mole for the whole week because they're paying 15 euro to do something better. But it's also important to note that the healing requirement for most dungeons has been nerfed significantly since Dragonflight, so based on certain affixes and doing a certain dungeon, you might not have a lot of things to do in terms of providing pure healing. But... That doesn't stop you from having to DPS. A good healer in high-end content will, how do I say, provide as much healing as is needed for the group at a given time, and then we'll go back to DPSing. And knowing when to do that, when you can DPS instead of healing, can take some time to master. This is why I put healing as one of the hardest roles right now, because you don't only have to heal, you have to provide DPS. And on top of that, most of the affixes in Mythic Plus are healer affixes. You have to do all the dirty jobs that other players don't want to do. And this is why I think healing can be really, really, really awkward. But at the same time, it can also be extremely rewarding. You are sometimes regarded as the babysitter of the group responsible for other players mistakes but at the same time because of that a lot of the times when someone dies they might say one heal which is extremely triggering because there's plenty of dps players out there who have no idea about defensives and interrupts and avoiding swirly stuff and they just fully rely on healing which is very very evident in those low mythic plus keys and this is why i say that doing keys that are relatively low can be so much more difficult than doing something like a plus 22 or plus 23 where people know how to avoid or relatively know how to avoid and ignore avoidable damage so the overall summary of the video in terms of looking at high keys and low end keys my rankings of the hardest role would be healer being is one of the hardest roles because you're basically playing everything you're playing a dps you're playing a healer you are dealing with all the affixes i'll put tank as the second because again you're the leader of the group you set the pace you know the route 
you have to survive, especially if you're someone like a Blue Decay, whose survivability is completely dependent on the player themselves. And then lastly, it's going to be a DPS class, so DPS role. Again, you have to remember, if we're talking about something like barrier of entry, I consider tanking to have the highest barrier of entry because you need to know the routes, which... Again, it's not difficult to learn routes, but if you're someone who's completely new to World of Warcraft, it can be daunting as a new player coming in as a tank in a multiplayer environment and having to learn all those things. But I also do not forget those good DPS players because arguably one of the roles that can really carry a group is a really, really good DPS player who makes mobs, how do I say, more DPS, mobs live less, People like tanks and healers have to spend less uh, less time on defensives, on healing people, and therefore it makes the dungeon a lot cleaner. So, And again, there's a lot of caveats to this video, but I hope that I provide a decent overview of what it's like playing a class or different roles in a Mythic Plus environment, especially for new players and maybe players who are pushing high-end Mythic Plus content. It is important to note that the difference or the difficulty of healers or the healing role is always going to be dependent on how much healing there is going to be in a mythic plus dungeon and that is almost dictated by blizzard and blizzard has a different opinions about again at the start of dragonfly they wanted healers to heal but at the same time they nerfed most of the healer checks and now healers are falling into the hybrid role a little bit again let me know how you feel about this video i'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussion about this let me know which role you think is the most difficult, both for new players coming into World of Warcraft and players who are looking to do high-end Mythicus content. If you liked the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.